This is the NVIDIA RTX A2000. Originally intended for workstation workloads, it is a pretty decent compute device. To tear it down, you're gonna have a number of screws you're gonna have to deal with. You're going to need in your kit the TR6 and the TR8 star tip screws in order to completely tear down this GPU. Your TR6 is gonna be the main screws on the back including the main ones holding this retention bracket. Your TR8s are gonna be on the front side or the IO plate of this GPU. You will need to remove the IO plate in order to tear down this GPU. You have a total of one, two, three, four, 10 screws to completely remove from this GPU. Most of them being on the back, don't forget the one towards the bottom of the PCIe slot. Then you have your two towards the front I.O. Once you tear it down, pull very carefully from the I.O. side up because you will need to disconnect this fan header. This fan header does not have a long cord, so be extra careful. Then you're going to be greeted by a heat sink. No fans on it, nothing on it whatsoever. Be careful not to pry by the fin stack because you will bend the fins. The thermal paste on this particular GPU is pretty putty-like and hard. So when you go to take it off, it will make a little popping sound, especially around the GPU die. Be careful as to not scratch or break off any SMDs around the die. Instead, you can use the guitar pick from your iFixit kit or a guitar pick in general to kind of very carefully at a nice little angle, scrape up the putty that's, or the thermal paste that's alongside without breaking off the SMDs. Additionally, to remove this heat sink very carefully without damaging anything, look for a bald spot or a spot with no SMDs on the card right below the PCIe slot or right above the PCIe slot. And you can use a little pry, plastic pry tool like your iFixit one, and you will go underneath the heat sink and push up ever so carefully and that will release the GPU because the memory thermal pads, especially that thermal paste, it's gonna make it hold on uh, and not want to release. You're gonna feel a little bit uncomfortable, but with the pry tool in the right pivot position, you'll be able to remove the heat sink from the GPU. Now this doesn't cover much surface area, which is why the A2000 gets a little bit toasty. You could replace the thermal pads and let's go ahead and get a measurement on that for you right now. Thermal pads are two mil thick. So you can have replacement thermal pads on standby, or you can check out gprisers.com who is also selling thermal pads. And believe it or not, this is up there with Fuji Poly and even a better thermal efficiency than Thermal Grizzly's minus pad eights. But just get good thermal pads and you'll be able to keep the thermals well within check on this GPU in an open air frame or even a decent air case uh, where you have blower fans. However, for me, in my hot environment, I will be using the Copper Shim Mod from Cool My GPU. So we need to place it on this GPU with some thermal paste, of course, on both the bottom and top, reapply thermal paste and clean off the thermal paste, the old, off of the heatsink, and put this GPU back together. Before I let you go, the Copper Shim Mod or plate from Cool My GPU only fits on the A2000 one way it will actually fit into the groove to where there's no movement whatsoever. However, if you're not planning on doing this mod, don't worry about it, and instead get yourself some good thermal pads and replace it. Two mil thick is what you need. Get yourself some good thermal paste, MX4, Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot, whichever you prefer, and to install the GPU or to get everything back together, obviously, once the thermal pad and thermal paste is replaced, you're gonna put your heat sink back on like so it sits just like this on top of everything then you're going to want to connect your fan so you're going to have to angle the cooler just like so so that way you can connect it flip it back over lay it on top and then once you have everything together you're going to go and install all the screws in reverse order i would start with the retention bracket and the two main screws first 
don't tighten it all the way get all the other screws started and then do it in a cross hatch pattern on the retention bracket and then of course your IO uh, you're going to need because the two screws here at the end are holding in the IO as well so make sure you don't forget to install that but I have seen some people install it in their server cases without any IO whatsoever because this card is very light. I hope this video helped you out in some form or fashion. If it did, please hit the like button on the way out. Make sure to get subscribed for additional content like this. And don't forget to hit the notifi notification bell to stay up to date. Besides that, you all have yourself a wonderful day. Please feel free to help support the channel by clicking links in the description. And I will catch you on the next one. Take care.